Welcome back. So I finally got the Ford Edsel block back from the machine shop this week, and it is time to start getting this thing put back together. I'm really happy with the way the block turned out. If y'all are in the Hampton Roads, Virginia area, and you need any kind of machine work done, check out Phelps Machine Inc. out in Suffolk. It's a family-owned company. They'll do anything from you know turning rotors, honing out. Uh, they'll do mag checks, cleaning for you, everything up to including a full engine build, uh, fully dressed, you name it. Great people to work with, very friendly, very fair on price, and uh, like I said, I, I can't say enough good about them. They did a great job on this engine for me. So, uh, so today's video is going to be a how-to on filing and fitting piston rings, and I figured if, uh, if y'all had never done this before, uh, we'll walk through the process, I'll show you some tips and tricks. Uh, and how to do this without you know breaking the bank so a couple of tools you're going to need for this you're going to need a set of piston ring pliers you don't have to go anything very expensive i think i picked these up at o'reilly's for maybe around 10 or 15 dollars you're going to need a set of needle files to measure your ring gaps you're going to need where's my needle file at you're going to need a set of needle files or at least one needle file that's got a pretty fine grit on it that'll help us clean up any burrs or anything like that after we're done with our ring filer. This is not necessary, but I like to use a dial indicator to measure my cylinder bore uh, to make sure that I'm getting my gap correctly. Of course, you're going to need a set of piston rings, a set of pistons, and a ring filer. There's about a hundred different types of ring filers you can buy. For this video, we're going to use a manual ring filer instead of my electric one. Uh, number one, they're cheaper. Number two, they do pretty much the exact same job if you take your time. Uh, and you don't need to have a big electric professional ring filer in your garage if you're not doing this all the time. So, uh, One other thing I like to keep around is a notepad, because uh, I don't typically finish this all in one night. So I'll do all my rings on one side, and I'll write down what my ring gaps measured out to be, uh, how many turns on my ring filer I needed to start to get the, the gap started to be dialed in, uh, and then I go from there. So I'm gonna bring you all in here, and we're gonna start going through exactly how to get set up, and then we'll start filing ranks. You don't wanna get yourself a couple of wobble pops. My recommendation is, if you're first time doing this, wobble pop per cylinder, that'll get you going right. All right, now we're gonna open up that piston ring package, pull out the spec sheet. Got three different types of rings we're going to put on here. All right, you got oil rings, you got your compression rings, you got top compression ring and a bottom compression ring. Your oil rings are going to have a minimum gap associated to them. In this case, it's 15 thousandths. I've already measured out my oil rings for this cylinder number five, and it is at 15 thousandths, and I've already put them on the piston. I, next thing is we got to do a little bit of maths for my compression rings, all right? You need to measure your bore if you don't know what it is. If you don't know what your bore is, use that measuring caliper and you can open it up if it, mine would open. There we go. All right, and you wanna measure the size of that bore in thousandths of an inch. Okay, my particular bore is 4.09 and I have to multiply that bore by 0040 for my first compression ring and 0.0045 for my top compression ring. For me, that worked out to a gap of 0 0.0016 and 0 0.0018. Well, I always like to start with the middle ring after I'm done with my oil ring, all right? And I always go one cylinder at a time. All my cylinders are numbered. All my pistons are numbered with the matching cylinder to them um, and then I do every piston individually before I move on. All right so you can see the marking on this piston ring that's that mark I was telling you about that will indicate what the top side of that is. So you want to just fit that into the bore all right and you have to make sure it's square. I'm going to turn that a little bit actually so you can see the gap.
All right, now in that spec sheet, it's also going to tell you how far down in the bore that ring needs to be in order to get the correct reading. All right, so mine tells me I need to have that bore in, or sorry, that piston ring in the bore one inch, and it needs to be squared up. So you can use a machinist rule, or if you have one, if, if you don't, regular old tape measure will do. So I'm going to set my tape measure on there, and I'm going to push this down to one inch in five or diff six different spots to make sure that it is square in the bore. All right, and then if I had a gap, I would measure it. But this one is so close together that I don't have the ability to even fit one of my feeler gauges in there. I need to open this gap up to 16 thousandths of an inch, or 0 0.016. Now, I've already done the other side of this, and that's where this notebook comes in handy. Um, and I wrote down what my gap needed to be, and I also wrote down how many turns on my ring filer I need to do on each end of this piston ring to get close to what my gap needs to be. So now I can take this out of here, take it over to my ring filer, and start filing for the gap. Field trip. All right. So we are at the ring filer. Super easy to use, super simple. It's got a pretty sweet, very fast handle on it. All it is is an abrasive disc on a flat aluminum surface. You're gonna take your piston ring, put it up against your abrasive disc, most important thing here is to make sure that your ring end is square on that abrasive disc. Right, you can put them up against, that's the way I prefer to do it, or you can bring them up and hold them flat up against the backside. And a lot of the times these abrasive discs have a little bit of run out of them, they wiggle. So what I'll end up doing is I'll file one side of this and then I will flip the ring over and file the other side on the same side of that abrasive disc. That way I'm making sure that I'm keeping even pressure and I'm getting that good square edge on it. Take your time. Take it easy. Grind it slow. Just take a little off there. Count your turns. Make sure you're staying nice and square. When you think you've taken off enough to get started, flip the ring over. Do the other side. Once you finish filing, set your piston ring back in the bore. Make sure you've got it top up and make sure you put it back square with whatever measurement you were supposed to use. And now we've got a gap up top here. Then grab your feeler gauge that you uh, inadvertently closed and now you have to go through all of your feeler gauges to find the correct measurement again. Take that and see if it fits in the gap. Oh, I got it first try. All right. Now, if it's a little bit bigger, it's okay. Not a huge deal. You know, I'd rather have uh, too big of a gap than too small of a gap. Once you got your ring gap set, you take your finger, feel the edges of that ring, and you're gonna feel some burrs. You're gonna take your needle file, it's nice and easy. Scrape those burrs off. Now you're gonna do that on the top, the bottom, and the front and back side edges. Make sure that she is nice and smooth and nothing is gonna get caught in that cylinder bore.
nice and smooth, ready to install. Once you got your ring gap set, go ahead and grab your piston ring pliers. Make sure you got your ring facing the right way with that top mark up. Go ahead and slide your ring onto your piston, get it into the correct slot. That one is set and we are now ready to move on to the top compression ring and then we're just going to wash, rinse, repeat for the rest of the cylinders. So I guess at this point I want to put you all on time lapse and with maybe some awesome motivational rock and roll music. You can watch me uh, go ahead and do the rest of these real quick and I'll talk to you all in a minute. So we've got all the piston rings filed, they're installed on the pistons. I don't know if you've been following along in the three videos I've posted on this channel since I started, but this is the 390 FE that I pulled out of my 65 Thunderbird back in, I want to say late August, early September. And here it is late January and I'm finally getting back to working on it. Um, back in that video, I had said I had a big surprise coming for this engine. And part of that is that bore that I was talking about earlier, which is a 4.09, 60 thousandths over from the stock. Uh, the other half of that is going to be this crankshaft here. So this is a scat billet crankshaft uh, that I got through CNC Motorsports. And it's got a stroke of 4.25 inches instead of the 3.78 inch stroke that comes standard on the 390. And if I did my math correctly on the old Google box, that's going to take us up to, I think, just under 447 cubic inches. And then we're going to pair that with a set of Edelbrock Performer RPM heads. I got an Edelbrock intake to go on this and an Edelbrock 750 CFM carburetor, as well as some other, you know, valve train goodies and camshaft and a bunch of go fast parts. It's going to be pretty sweet. Uh, then we're going to back that with this AODE transmission out of an early 90s Mustang. So that's going to replace the stock three-speed MX transmission that came in the car. So I'm going to go through a full rebuild on that transmission. We're going to put a, a heavy-duty, you know, rebuild kit in there. We're going to install a standalone transmission controller in the car and go through, you know, fabricating the transmission cross member and all that. And then hopefully we get this car done in a reasonable amount of time. And we've got a big event that we want to do here as a family later on this summer. And that's the end goal, is to get the car on the road, get it you know, ready to go, uh, maybe get some paint on it. We'll see where we end up. But uh, yeah, got a lot to do in a very short amount of time. Uh, so stick, a, stick around and uh, got a lot more content coming up. And uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I hope you learned something and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right, bye.